Hello everyone, welcome to another video of our YouTube tutorials. I am Edwin Hernandez, Grasshopper Specialist at Shipdiver, and today I want to show you some methods that I use to keep my definitions organized. The reasons why you want to keep your definitions organized is to make it future-proof, so that if in the future you want these definitions to be taken over by somebody else, then this person will be able to read and understand clearly what your intention was with such definition. You want to also make your definition scalable, that means that if your definition starts to be become very complex, it is easy to make any changes because everything is organized and documented. Then you also want to make your definitions organized if you want to work with teams or to get support. So for example, at Shapediver, we give support at shapediver.com slash forum. And there you can put your questions with your definitions. And ideally, you have all of these definitions organized and documented so that we can easily understand them and give you the help that you need. And finally, if you have your definition organized, it is easy to debug. So it is easy to find any errors or any problems that your definition has, and then of course find a solution. So today I want to show you four methods that I use to keep the definitions organized. The first one is to prepare your ingredients or your main parameters. The second one is to work in small scripts or groups. The third one is to document your project. And the fourth one is to define your outputs. So let's get started. So here we have this definition that we use in our table configurator tutorials. You can find the video series in our YouTube channel. And the first method, which is prepare your ingredients or main parameters, is here in our phrase group, that is the inputs group. So here is where all of our parameters are grouped. So all of our sliders, drop down menus, special inputs, like for example, this one that is the shape diver geometry input, and also even panels if we have hard coded parameters. And all of them are always grouped at the beginning. Additionally to that, I always use primitives to get information out of these parameters. So here, for example, I have this slider and I don't connect it directly to any other component. But instead, I use primitives. So if you go to the first tab, the params tab, and then here you have the primitives group, you can find the Boolean primitive, integer, text, number, etc., etc. And this is what I use to output my information. So here I have this number primitive, and then we have another one, which is the one that I'm going to take somewhere else. Here I could take, for example, the table length, copy it, and move it somewhere else where I need it to be used. And my wire display is always set to hidden. So if I go right click and I go wire display, you can see that it is set to hidden. I never set it to default because that means that we will see always our wire displayed and we don't want that because then is when we have the problem of too many wires coming out from different places and all of them start to collide and then you cannot really follow what's going on in your definition. So we always keep this with the wire hidden and again, all of this is prepared to be taken somewhere else. So this is what I call my ingredients. So all of this is simply the primitives of every single parameter, but set with a wire displayed to hidden. So that means that if, for example, I need to create the tabletop, that will mean that I will need the table length, table width, a table height. So I will just have to take these three primitives here and copy them somewhere else where they need to be used. And in that way, I make sure that my workflow is fast because I have already everything prepared to be taken as ingredients. And uh, I can start scripting whatever I need to script with these three parameters. The next method is to work in small scripts or groups. So here we have these yellow groups, which are small scripts inside our big definition. Each of these groups are as small as possible so that they perform a specific task and they are independent from each other. So there is always an input area and an output area, and we have nothing going out or inside this group in between. If I need to take information inside this group, everything has to be at the beginning in the inputs and anything that I want to take out has to be placed in the outputs group. This happens throughout all the groups that you can see. So even this one that, for example, has a lot of inputs. We are also using colors to be able to recognize how our script is organized. So everything that is in the blue groups define inputs and outputs. Everything that is in yellow groups define our small groups with different tasks. And everything that is in the white ones are the ones that actually grab these small groups to create the specific steps in our definition. So for example, here we have one, two, three, four, and 
five steps in our definition defined by these white groups. In this way, we can go from a global scale of our definition to a very specific scale inside our little groups. The next method is to document your project. So it is very important to always add notes in your definition. In this case, we are using the scribble components. With this component, you can actually write different notes in your definition. And the reason why we use the scribble one as well is because it allows us to define also the size of our font so that we can also give some hierarchy to the documentation that we are adding in our definition. However, you could also add this information in a panel, for example, or even inside the groups itself. So if you go right click in your group, you can add a name inside your group. And this name is the one that is shown here. We use that, for example, in our very small groups where we draw right click. And then here is where we define the name of this small group. Additionally to that, we also give recognizable names to all of our primitives. So if you can see here in our ingredients, each of them has a recognizable name. So table length, table width, table height, etc. And additionally, we have an underscore data type. So in this case, for example, you have table length underscore number, table width underscore number. Here, for example, we have a tabletop profile underscore integer. Here we have one called custom tabletop profile underscore curve. So in this way, in a matter of seconds, if I go to any of my small groups, I can know which information is coming in and which type of information is coming in because the type of information is also very important to know how you are going to handle it. So it's not the same way you handle a curve to the way that you handle a number, to the way you handle an integer, etc. So if you have that underscore integer, underscore curve, you can easily just by looking at it, know exactly what you are dealing with because you have a global view of your documented definition. Finally, the last method is to define your outputs. So here we have already defined our inputs, but we also need to define our outputs. So here on the other side, at the end of our definition, we have all of our outputs. So these are our main output, the main outcome that we want to get from this definition. We don't want any of these main outputs in the middle of our definition. We want them always grouped at the end so that we know exactly what we are getting out of this definition. This is especially important if you want to upload your definition at Shapediver in our platform, because in our viewer, everything that has preview on is going to be displayed. So for example, if we come here in the middle, and we preview on one of these cures, for example. So we go right click, preview on. Then we can see some rectangles in the ground. These rectangles, if you don't preview them off, they will be displayed in the Shape Diver viewer. So that's why everything that is before our main outputs should be preview off. So in that way, you make sure that just what is in our outputs group is what is allowed to have preview on. You can also put here, for example, data output. So here, in this case, we have just display output. So the meshes itself, so tabletop, apron, legs. So again, everything with a recognizable name. But you can also add data outputs. So if you have seen other of our video tutorials, we explain that with ShapeDiver, you can output not just geometry, but you can output also information. So here in the outputs tab in the ShapeDiver plugin, you have the ShapeDiver data outputs, the ShapeDiver export downloads outputs. So you can actually extract from this definition all kinds of information and different type of files. So image files, PDFs, DXF files, 3DM files, etc. So all of these kind of outputs should be also included in your outputs group. And that's all for today. We hope that these four methods that I just shared with you are going to help you in the workflow of the creation of your Grasshopper definitions. If you have any other methods that you use, we will love to hear about them. Please write them down below in the comments. If you like this video, please click the like button down below. And if you want to learn more specific shape diver topics, we have other videos in our YouTube channel where we talk more about, for example, what our shape diver plugin offers and the platform itself. If you want to learn more about that and don't miss any future tutorials, please subscribe and see you in the next one.